So welcome back to the vlog. Um, today's the first day back in the garage after about five weeks. So as you can see here, I've managed to get the intercooler um, fin guard off. The intercoolers and brackets and the uh, the air hose. And that's the lines there that go down to the power steering pump. And this is on the back of the manifold. So what I've done is um, disconnected a lot of hoses. The reason I didn't fill in this was because it's just trial and error to get these off. A lot of these clamps have rusted over time and uh, most of them broke. So these are gonna be some Jubilee clip replacements in the future. But basically all I've done is um, take a picture of each end of each hose as I go and disconnect them. And it's really just been about an hour long fight to get a few manifold hoses off here. Um, that's where that water pipe where the airline crossover went. Then there's a couple of engine stays that go manifold stays from the block to the manifold and um, really that's it not much else has changed and then down here at the back a lot of this is all hooked up for the turbo system so i can't remember the name of all of these it's online but basically these solenoids all control um the boost pressure and uh, they're all kind of linked in so this is why it's an absolute nightmare to get access to fix these if they break because this is actually the section of the engine that would be against the firewall so you're trying to get your hand up from underneath this way and pff, no hope and that's why as you can see the oil leak was coming down from the camshaft hit it with a bit of quick brake cleaner there just to see if there's any leaks around the sump but thankfully not i think um yeah so really the wiring ring is still attached here to the manifold so what you have to do is actually take the whole manifold off and that lets you get access to the wiring loom underneath here. Um, what I'll do also is you've got your distributor, the dizzy cap. So <clears throat> one at a time, mark all the hoses, or sorry, the HT leads and which one to go into so that they come off and go back in the same order. I'll also mark the position of the distributor just to be sure so that the time is not affected when it goes back on. Um, I've also got a lot of cranky old sensors I'm trying to get off without breaking them. This was one that broke previously. Um, I've now got a spare part for it, so once I take this water elbow off, I can put it in the vise and remove this sensor and put the new one in. Um, actually, it's getting quite hard to find and these are getting quite expensive now. I mean, it's about 50, 40, 50 pound for one sensor, probably 80 or 90 for the whole water tree with the sensor. So. I mean, anything on this engine, these old engines now, once you break them, it's not even getting new parts, you can't get them. It's basically a hunt to try and actually get a part at all. Again, um, one of the challenges I faced was the king lead, and that's basically from your igniter on the engine loom to the top of the distributor. You can't get these anymore, you have to buy a set, so I could have made one, but I decided thought well why not I need to replace them anyway because who knows what shape they're in once you get I mean all of this when, when the engine's in position you're really not going to want to start taking the intercooler off again so the plan is plugs leads distributor cap um, probably paint this too and there's the turbo and then I've actually just blasted the manifold here with a bit of WD-40 to try and loosen these bolts up so they don't shear as well because you need to get the heat shield off so that you can get access to the manifold and there's one of the cheeky wee studs in there that's probably going to break on me so again um, let's see the oil filter is tucked away in there there's your O2 sensor and your catalytic converter so all of this will be getting ripped off and replaced with a decat because legally you don't need to have it and it will help the turbo spool a bit better um, also, I'll have to read the manual when it's time to get near the auxiliary belts and see which order these all come off. So today, I'm not trying to take it too seriously. I'm just have a bit of fun, <clears throat> disconnect what I can and see how much I can strip off it and what I'm left with. Hopefully, I don't break anything in between because it's, as you can see, it's all getting a bit crusty and I've already broke one of these uh, manifold, these uh, silicon hoses. So luckily, I've got some spare, but... I mean, it's probably a good idea to do all of these, so yeah, that's it, and I'll jump now into a wee time lapse for you.
Okay, so here's another challenging bit. I've disconnected the oxygen sensor. There's some more wiring loom down here and it's all around down to the uh, aircon. So I'll have to take off the alternator uh, tightening bolt. I'll hopefully loosen up this belt, which lets me slide it off the alternator. And then all of this wiring loom goes through this plastic cover and onto here to secure it on the side of the engine, which then goes up here across one connection onto the alternator. And then it runs across here. Oops, sorry for the dodgy camera. Runs across here and then into there under the manifold. So now we've got the manifold kind of wiggle loose. Um, we'll actually have to go in reverse and free up all of this before we can get the manifold off now. Okay, so I'm back to the uh, exhaust side and what I've done is loosened up all these bolts around here, which you can see now the downpipe is starting to come away from the turbine exhaust housing. Up here, um, one bit of bad luck, one of the studs sheared, so once I get the manifold off, all the others were fine. Unfortunately, this one's um, sheared, so one more to buy, a couple of pounds, and then I can extract that from the head and put in the new one. Um, O2 is out, O2 sensor. I'm just actually slackening these off to give me some clearance here so I can remove that. Um, and that's about it for now on the exhaust side. Really, what you've seen on the, uh, the fast forward video was I was struggling to get this water pipe off the water tree that houses the sensors here. And also a couple of the coolant hoses down around here, elbows, and also your small boost hoses onto the wastegate so hopefully these will taken the clamps off and these should come free once I kind of pull the turbo off um, hopefully that's the plan also um, I need to slacken off the head cover before we can take out the distributor but so far everything's slackened off where what it can do um, probably depending on how easy the cam cover is will determine if I take the injector reel off or not not sure, might not need to, fingers crossed, but we'll see. Um, also this water and air line, uh, a lot of these are rooted by hard lines, so the plan is to give these a paint, rust proof them and paint them with high temperature paint before putting them back on. So for now this evening, hopefully just struggle on and try and get this uh, exhaust off and the manifold off and then that should almost do this and then we can actually work on the timing cover and the pulley and take it from there. Okay, so here's the completed article. Um, what I've done is remove the gasket, manifold. There's actually a couple of things here. One really large oil return or oil feed, oil return, sorry, oil feed from the block to the turbo. It then comes down through a hard pipe and connects up to here, back to the sump. Um, I've basically plugged all the, any holes that can go in to the head, into the oil gallery, anything like that. Water, um, same on the other side on the uh, in that manifold side so I've still to take off the distributor maybe that's a job for tomorrow and I've just hit it with some brake cleaner for now to try and get some of the heavy sludge off and I'm actually going to tackle that with a paintbrush and some degreasant 
but for now it looks like the problem is from the camshaft this is where it's been leaking just here and also i think in there it's quite difficult to see but it's this is the actual original leak that caused me to rip the engine out and um, so everything's a bit mucky over time so again this will all get painted sanded primed painted new gaskets everything um there's not really much more i can say at the moment the bricks actually were here just as a backup because the old iron block is so heavy i rammed a couple of bricks in just to take the weight off the actual engine crane harness there because you can see it's kind of slowly bending so i thought just as a, a backup option i didn't want it dropping on the deck um but yeah that's about it so for now this is what the garage looks like. Everything's in a kind of flow. We started off there, worked our way across to the inlet manifold, and then wiring loom, and then across to the AC compressor power steering, and then more wiring loom, then turbocharger and exhaust manifold off in one. And before that, we took off the catalytic converter, which will be going into the bin or recycling. And um, we've also got the water tree and some electrical sensors. And yeah, that's about it. So that's kind of what you need to do to get to the point of doing the head and the leaks. So not the easiest of jobs. I still think Subarus are a hell of a lot easier to work on. Um, but then again, I've never had experience on a Toyota engine. So you can actually see how well they're built though. Everything is... Um, secure thought out really nice design but it's an absolute pig to work on on your own so thanks toyota <laughs> okay thanks guys see you next time